Gonna give you guys a quick workshop tour. Just gonna see if anyone else does. This is it. This is our kitchen showroom room under construction. All shaker style at the moment. We're gonna have a Arga Range Master there. We're in partnership with them. Um, some nice walnut or birch ply drawers on Blum Runners in there. Uh, that's my office in there. And out of the showroom, I'll take you into the workshop. There's four and a half thousand square foot. I'll try and show you from upstairs in a minute. This is our trusty wood burner. This is from a company called Technic. And they sell a lot of their stuff from eBay. Um, and this particular one is one of their biggest models uh, just because of the space in the workshop. We have an insulated flue starting as high as possible so we can get maximum heat output from the unlined flue. Uh, this is the staircase from the other video, the simplest staircase with the juice and six by twos. I'll take you up there so you can see the actual height and space we have in here so this is our above office and showroom space which is going to have some flooring put down in the new year hopefully that's our ventilation for the spray booth which is under there this is some spare stuff and packaging materials here Let's turn you around that is our space I think you can see it's a pretty decent size considering how much we've got in it. <clears throat> so start over here, this is our packaging area and kitchen. And just in there is our new toilet. Uh, we moved in just over a year ago, so we haven't actually, we didn't install this, this is already here. So we will be putting in a nice shaker style kitchen there at some point, um, just to brighten the place up, because it's all a bit beige and gray at the moment, which isn't a bad thing, but I don't like it that much. These are some beach doors for a kitchen we're currently making. Um, we're just about to go on Christmas break, so everything's wound down. We've had a good tidy up. Um, and the majority of the stuff we're in the middle of constructing, we've just left um, in suitable positions, ready to start up again in two weeks when we come back. So this is our prep table. So we run a Merca Deiros sander is a 240 volt um, self extracting machine basically. Let's find that for you. This is the machine, it's very small, nice and compact, just like a Dyna braid which they do in America. Um, lovely machine, it does cost a fair bit of money to own one, um, but since we've had it, we haven't really looked back at that and thought it was a problem at the time. Obviously, it was a big outlay. Um, but finishing is the number one important thing that gives you your final product. So I'll just show you the spray booth before we go into the rest of the workshop. This is our spray booth. So we have two drying rooms. One is out here. Because we have um, all this timber workshop uh, dust in the air, I'll just close this a little bit so you can see. We have these filters everywhere. So these box filters allow a good flow of air. This is a homemade booth. I call it a homemade. I mean, we're not DIYers, but it's what I would consider a homemade booth. We filter out the uh, dust particles there on the other side. If you have a look, that'll be a different colour this side. So there's all the dust particles in there. Prevents it going in the paint finish. But anyway, this is our primer drying room. So we put all our primed items in this part of the spray booth. Uh, a lot of air comes through here so it gets the quicker side of the drying times. We've got a variable switch here that's temporarily wired in. When I say temporarily, it's more like a permanently temporary wired in thing. Um, that helps us control how much flow of air we want in the booth. Um, depending whether we've got stuff drying or whether we're actively spraying. In here's the spray booth. We have got several panel 
LED lights above which are fully sealed. Uh, this ceiling is a horrible ceiling, we are looking to replace that. So anyway, we run a Binks Raptor. Um, it looks very dirty, but we do use it a lot. Uh, it's basically it's a hopper system. Um, we've got some thinners and acetone mix in there to last for the two weeks while we're away. So that will evaporate um, quite a bit. Uh, it has a self-clean function basically. This is a recirculating pipe. Uh, you put that in there, turn your dials where you want them and it recirculates the thinners and acetone in there to clean it out. It is a air assisted gun. So you have uh, a paint hose and an air hose. Um, you can run it without air. Basically the air just assists the um, fan pattern um, to allow it to give you a nice coverage basically. We do run several inline filters. Here's one that is actually falling off the wall. But this is just a budget inline filter. We run a cardboard concertina filters. We did used to run um, filters that were used in automotive, which is this kind, but we now don't use that because these ones are much more suited to our airflow requirements show you in here this is our drying room for top coated goods so we have more racks in here as you can see we've replaced the ceiling in here with a plasterboard ceiling and it's all sealed off to prevent unwanted uh, uncontrolled air it's going on filtered air coming through here um, most of our racks have sleeves on let's nip out of here So on to the other stuff. I will turn this on. This is a Format 4 by Felder 550E motion table saw. Uh, it's a 550 because it can run a 550mm blade. Um, at the moment we just run a 400mm blade with a scoring blade in here. Um, it is the biggest and best of their saws but we decided that if we were going to do something um, expensive and do it properly, uh, this one features some superb tools that we can use um, for repeat cuts but above all else it's uh, extremely accurate. It has an automated rip fence. We didn't go for the automated cross cut fence because I just thought something that's removable like that we would just struggle with accuracy. Time after time, it'll probably get knocked. Um, but I'll show you the rest of that in a moment. Once this machine's loaded up, I'll show you how it works, but I'll run through a few other machines. So we have our offcuts pile at the back over here, nice and tidy, because obviously we've cleaned up for Christmas. Around the back, we have a dedicated extractor for this machine, which is a Felder AF22. Um, here it is, Felder AF22. It's a twin bag extractor. Um, we've got a micro filter on there because we do a lot of man-made boards uh, and it's just better for our health and also cleanliness in the shop. Um, next to the AF22 is this G-Tech compressor. This is a um, refrigerating drying compressor to give us quality air. We bought this initially because we wanted, um, well, we actually encountered a problem with our sander, which is behind here, we might as well lead on to this. So when we first had this, this is a Sandia 1S by SCM, a 910 mil wide sander. When we first bought this sander, we had issues with the oscillation solenoids inside. Pretty uh, boring for some people who don't know what that is. Basically, where the belt rotates inside there, we have a conveyor belt running that way and then the belt rotates opposite the sanding belt. But to save it uh, wearing out in certain locations, it moves from side to side, so it oscillates slightly. Now inside there's a tiny solenoid that pushes one end of the beam backwards and forwards, which means the belt runs from side to side on its own. Without the quality filtered air that came from the G-Tech compressor, we had some minor corrosion um, inside the sandier, 
um, on the actual pivot in the solenoid which meant it wasn't oscillating properly and it was eating all the belts we were putting in so they were ripping so that prompted us to get this which we never really thought about uh, now we've got it it's pretty much plain sailing from there you can't get a better compressor you can get a bigger one um, but that is the one for us it has an automated drain here um, so any of the moisture build up in the tank goes into there like I said we have um, a inline filter in the booth to take out any other water and the sand here has uh, another two filters inside while we're on the subject of the sand here we have um, some temporary extraction up here uh, again probably temporary permanent excuse me um, this is a P&J um, cabinet extractor it was chosen because it's a fine filter so inside here is lots and lots and lots and lots of dust bags a bit like on the AF22 you have the micro filter well standard filters have bags um, which are filter bags so this has loads of them it, the air gets filtered down into those and the dust drops into the hopper at the bottom this actually is one of the biggest hoppers I've seen on a cabinet extractor so we were really lucky to get that um, and this is a remanufactured um, unit so it was uh, reconditioned by P&J was used by a shot blasting company before we had it um, and actually was in really good condition so that's really good for us and then next to that is just a sort of mid-range start right uh, bandsaw the only gripe with this bandsaw is that the guides are really clunky it's something we need to look at and change over especially when we're running new blades this is a Lennox TriMaster um, quite a well I would say a pretty good blade um, all round it's not so great for the finer curves but it's really good for veneers uh, it, it does a lot of the stuff we want to do this is another bench so I don't know if you've noticed we've got quite thick benches um, this is the first one we looked at it's actually torsion construction so we have a crisscross of components inside so strips of timber this is actually a set ready for the next bench we're going to build so loads of rips of MDF there and basically make a grid formation inside and you glue it all and sandwich it together um, on a flat surface and you get a perfectly flat bench which means you can work efficiently and without any issues with warping or twisting in your products back over here we have this matrix table now this is um, for our wood welding so if you've ever heard of a wood welder you'll know what this is if you haven't um, a wood welder is basically this machine here so it's made by Alan Lamont in Scotland a really nice guy he actually dealt with us directly for this we have a four meter table here um, with six pneumatic rams on it so these run off the airlines that come through here and go into a compressor. They are movable into each one of these holes on the table. So they basically um, emit pressure onto a workpiece. If you're clamping items like doors together or windows together, you can vary the pressure and you almost have an infinite array of sizes you can accommodate. Um, these tables are available in any size. We have a sliding rail at the top for the actual welding tool. So this is the welder. Basically it works on radio frequency um, and it sends a radio frequency through the moisture in the wood. So you straddle the wood joint with these two electrodes on here. You hold the trigger, which is under here, and adjust with this little lever on the side with your thumb or whatever you can reach it with um, to make sure that your amperage is above the A or the red arrow um, to make sure you've got the most efficient penetration of radio frequency. What it does is it makes the water molecules vibrate and disappear which just leaves the glue and gives you almost an immediate bond so every joint we do now takes around 12 to 14 seconds to complete instead of leaving them for 24 hours in clamps so that helped us out a lot um, with productivity really here we have the blum mini press this is the fully manual version we don't really need a pneumatic version of this basically you press the button here you pull the handle down there's stops i'll show you 
the stops in here, these big black things here, actually sit on the face of the door and you have your borer for the hinge and your hole cutters um, to pile it for the screws. Now literally, as you press it, it goes onto the door and drills at the same time and that's it. There's a ruler on the back, which is pretty useful for repeat drilling. Apart from that, that's a basic machine. This is our old hinge drilling machine, but it's just a pillar drill. That's an accident stuff. Nothing to shout about really. We have a Morse oak guillotine here. This is for cutting moldings to stick on the faces of items or to create picture frames, um, various mitres basically. And that works with these two mitre blades here. Expensive machine, but you have to repeat cuts sometimes and it's the most efficient. Um, a lot of people wouldn't bother and they would use a chop saw, but for us it's perfect. And that is our beading rack up there. Here we have a clamping trolley. Basically it's a pallet with two A-frames in and a cross member in the middle. We put our clamps on here. We can move that around the workshop anywhere we would like. Down here is our storage and sheet material area. So this is where we store all of our panel goods and also store a lot of our timber supplies. Um, so we have a nice uh, bundle of beach here. We use a lot of MDF, birch ply. We have oak and tulip up here. We have some oak worktops here uh, and some jumbo tulip nine mil sheets here, which is the Garnica efficiency ply. Uh, over here we have some more. Um, 8 by 10 sheets and this is our 18 mil supply, our 9 mil MDF and these are all our random boards that we don't normally use. We have a portable skip which is really useful believe it or not. This is actually a router table covered in stuff you can't really see. This we use a lot for um, slotting and grooving minor components where we don't want to use the spindle. This actually has quite a nice router in it anyway. This is a good Makita router. If you're ever gonna look for a Makita router, I would look for this one, 3612C. Um, it takes half inch and quarter inch collets, uh, but I've run this from new in this router table that I built. This was built probably 10 years ago. It just has coach bolts with nuts on. Um, it has a groove in here, cut an angle grinder for a flathead screwdriver so you can move it. We have grooves on the back to adjust fence, um, gives you quite a lot of adjustment. The router bit comes through here, has a bit of a mouse hole and a hole at the back for a Festool extractor to fit. And then the big boy, which is the Wodkin um, BEQ, uh, this is I don't know how old, this is probably from the 1970s, I don't know. Someone can let me know. It has a Holzer power feed on top, a belt driven, and it still has the original leather belt on it. Um, the Holzer power feed's really good, really versatile tool. Uh, I can run into that um, in some more detail another day. Uh, over here we have uh, an entire kitchen, more or less. There's a few units missing on there and an entire bedroom that's in prep stage, uh, ready for drilling and component fitting. Here we have a cluster of machines. So we have, um, I think this is a Wodkin Berg's Green Mortiser, or a Cooksley Mortiser, I think. Let me just check. Yeah, it's a Cooksley there. So it's a Cooksley Mortiser, something that we're currently trying to restore. It just needs a, a new collet for here. Um, so we can fit in some of the smaller uh, mortise chisels in there. Um, this is a Cedric Tenoner with a bed um, that you can pull up and put away basically. So it's a two head Tenoner. Uh, you can fit a third head to it, um, but we won't probably. Uh, we don't really use it that much anyway, but it's good to have. Um, we bought all these machines as a bundle, so it's worth getting really. Um, and then we have another Cooksley machine. So this is a... Um, overhand planer with a thickness of underneath. Um, quite a small machine, but it's quite useful. I'd say it's probably got a 13 inch bed on it. Um, good amount of rise and fall 
on the thickness of section so that's really helpful for us um, and that is pretty much it for now so if you've got any questions about any of the machines let me know I'll quickly show you this format 4 machine now it's loaded up so here is the interface so this is your fence uh, so your rip fence uh, distance from the blade so if I show you how that moves let's put it at 400 we have to press the blue button there and you'll see it will come to 400 and that is super accurate we've not had an issue with it yet touch wood um, the adjustments on here that I said were manual are actually really good because if there is any discrepancy we do a test every now and then we actually have facility to um, move this ruler inside to make it accurate again so there's there's a good lifespan on that as opposed to the automated system which I think would just cause me issues um, and I don't want issues basically it has a good extraction hood it's another thing I quite liked so it rises and falls and it stays where it's supposed to stay we have a scoring blade in here that comes up and down if you select the scoring blade button and it also has a park feature so if I go into tooling and then scoring unit uh, we can park the scoring unit what that means is when I mentioned about the 550 blade with a 550 blade it would come to about here which means it would come into the area where the scoring blade functions from so with that park function it disappears allowing us to use this 550 blade that's actually down the back um, I'll show you the other good thing about these um, hoods is if you're cutting something on an angle and the extraction doesn't work because this will only work on a 90 degree setting they do other hoods this is a separate hood that literally quick releases into here with the press of a button it comes out you can slot that hood in there and do 45 degree any anything up to I think 50 degree um, without any dust coming out so you have your overhead dust extraction there and your underbed extraction coming from here all run by the AF22 which is uh, really good we actually share that AF22 with the spindle molder which is there the wadkin I was talking to you about um, and we just have a trailing dust hose there um, with a connection on it which uh, connects into here um, so yeah that's it this is our workshop and now you can see where everything's made